Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to do another collection script. This time, we're going to add a simple bag system. And the way this is going to work, the player can collect up to three coins before they bring it over to the cell pad. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as soon as the player touches the part, it adds one to the bag. So let me go ahead and get two more coins. So there's number two. And number three. And if I go to try to pick up this other coin here, it doesn't let me because I already reached my bag limit. So what I can do now is bring them over to the cell pad and they'll convert what's in my bag into coins. And there we go. So as soon as I do that, then I can go back to collecting coins. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so for this project, we're just using two different parts. One that is going to serve as your coin or whatever currency you want to use. And the other one is going to be the cell pad. As far as the scripting goes, we're going to start with the leaderboard script. And this is going to be a script that's under server script service. What we're doing for this script is whenever the player joins the game, what we're going to do is add a new folder onto that player. And then what we're going to do with that folder is store two different values. One of those values is going to be the coins and the other value is going to be the bag. If you want to choose a different name for your currency, then you can change it right here. And then make sure you also update the variables right here as well. And same goes for the bag. If you want to choose a different name for it, just update it right here. Moving on now, we're going to take a look at the script that goes under the coin. So what we're doing first here is just creating a variable as a reference for this part. And then we're making another variable called add point, and we're setting that equal to true at the beginning. We're creating a function that takes in this parameter other part. And we're going to be using that other part to find the player's name, and then locate that player under game.players. If it's able to find a player and add point is equal to true, then what we're going to do first is we're going to take a look at that player's bag to see how many items they have. And we're going to say if that player bag is less than three, you can change this to whatever number you want. And this number just corresponds to like the bag limit. So this will be the number of items you want the player to hold before they have to go sell them. Okay, so in my case, if the bag limit is under three, then what we're going to do first is say add point is equal to false so that it can't keep doing this over and over again. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add one to the bag value. And then we're going to teleport this part to a new location. And the way I did that is I referenced the part's position. And I set that equal to a new vector. For the x position, I told it to choose a random number between negative 100 and 100. And these values right here can change depending on how big of an area you want it to teleport between. For the y position, I just kept that the same. And then for the z position, I had it choose a random number. After that, I'm going to wait one second and then set add point back to true. And I'm running this function whenever the part gets touched by saying part.touched colon connect and then the name of the function. Okay, so now let's take a look at the script under the cell pad. Just like the other script, we're creating a variable as a reference for this part. Inside of this function, we're also using that other part parameter to find the player in game.players. If it's able to find a player, then what we're going to do in this case is we're going to check its bag value. And if that bag value is greater than zero, which means the player has something they're holding, then what we're going to do is we're going to set that bag value back to zero, and then we're going to give them coins. And the way I did it, I took the number of items in their bag and multiplied that by 25. If you want to change this to something else, you're more than welcome to. So for example, if you just want to convert one item to one coin, then you would just take this part out right here. Okay, after that, just like in the other script, we're doing this whenever the part is touched. So we say part.touched, colon connect, and then the name of our function. And I just noticed that I used the same function name as the other one. It doesn't really matter, but let's go ahead and call this one cell. So I'm going to update it here and also where I named the function up top. Okay, and just a couple things to be aware of. For the part here, you want to make sure that it's not anchored and also that there's no weld inside of this part here. If there is a weld or it's anchored, then you may run into the issue when you run into the part. It doesn't actually teleport. This was just a very easy way to set up a simple bag system for collection. If you guys have other ideas, you can post those in the comments and I'll try to get to those. For now though, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.